This one's just weird now. Anyway, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Brett Hornby here, and this will be the last of my trade retrospects in this time where I was recapping trades that have happened in Calgary Flames history, you know, towards the end of January and going into very early February here. As I recently talked about the time that we traded away, traded to get Craig Connery back with the Calgary Flames. But I also revisited the time that we traded Dion Phaneuf away. And I have my trade retrospects here in this playlist here. But now this one's just strange when we, you know, how we handled this asset here. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's strange. I mean, we definitely shook the tree. As Peter McGuire said that the Calgary Flames should have done. And they definitely shook the tree already right, in the 2009-10 season just before the Olympics there. As Calgary was mediocre and middling there. And, you know, when the salary cap era there, the Calgary Flames were in the worst position you could be in. Is when you're in the middle and you spend to the cap there. What I mean in the middle there is that you don't know if you should add pieces to get into the playoffs to be a contender here. Or blow it up and rebuild there. And that was a time where the Calgary Flames were in the middle here. And they thought maybe we can trade out some assets here. And, uh, you know, improve to be still a good team to contend to get in the playoffs here. But, uh, you know, this definitely looking back here. We probably shouldn't have made this trade at all here. And I'm talking about the time that we traded Ole Jokinen away. A year after when we, if you read the hockey buzz with Eklund there, there was all this time, uh, oh, Calgary, they we're looking for that number one center for Jerome McGinlon. Oh, Jokinen, he's coming to Calgary. Oh, oh Ole Jokinen, he's coming to Calgary. And uh, this is at the time when he was still with the uh, Florida Panthers here. And then in the draft, in the 2008 draft, there were a lot of trades that happened, and the Flames were definitely were busy there. But Ole Jokinen got traded to then the Phoenix Coyotes there. And, and it was like, oh, so much for that. That's not going to happen. He's not coming to Calgary. And then suddenly, you know, we build up to the trade deadline. And Eklund, you know, hockey buzz. It's kind of the National Enquirer of hockey trade rumors there. But, you know, going into the trade deadline in 2009 there, it kept saying, you know, he ranks trade speculation from E1 to 5. And I remember the day before, it said, Ole Jokinen to Calgary, E4. And I was like, ah, this is a boy who cries. Well, it's not going to happen. And then it actually happened. Ole Jokinen came to the Calgary Flames at the 2009 tread deadline. And then he had like, you know, 10 points in six games there. And things looked like it was good there. And actually, over his NHL career here, I mean, most of his career, he played for uh, mediocre teams. And he played over 12,000 games in the NHL. But he only played six games with the Calgary Flames in the playoffs, and that was all in the 2009 playoffs there. And the fact that he actually was familiar with Mike Keenan, who was the head coach at the time there. So he definitely worked with Mike Keenan there, but I was towards the end of his tenure with Calgary here. So that leads into the 9-10 season where we decided to move on from Mike Keenan here and uh, brought in Brent Sutter here, and we had a bunch of older veterans here, and... Uh, Ole Jokinen, at the time, I mean, it was a big trade that we made, and he was making $5.5 million there from that deal that he signed with Florida that Phoenix took on. And, you know, he was in the last year of his deal working over $5 million there, but he definitely only played, scored uh, five goals up to this point here, and it was February 1st, 2010 here. And the other thing that was strange with this trade here is that we traded Dion Phaneuf the day before. You can see that video and I break down that I didn't think that was a good trade here. This one I think is just as bad. And looking back on it, we were better off to not make this trade at all. Even though, I mean, we ultimately didn't make the playoffs and uh, it just didn't make sense what, what we did with Holy Opening. Is, uh, is it just, it's strange. I mean, but there was reports that this trade was in the works that that same night. I mean, it was early in the day when Calgary traded Dion Phaneuf to Toronto. But it was, apparently it was reported, and it wasn't official, but it, it almost sounded like you saw it from a mile away here in the Calgary market that the Calgary Flames were going to trade Ole Jokinen 
but it wasn't going to be till after the game the next night there. And it was just weird that, uh, you know, because ultimately what happened is that we traded only Jokinen with Brandon Prust, and actually Brandon Prust uh, ultimately came back to Calgary after, uh, you know, we traded Jim Vandermeer because he was involved in the Ole Jokinen trade at the deadline to get Ole Jokinen here. Now it's just kind of weird that Ole Jokinen got packaged in with a guy that we traded away to get Ole Jokinen. He went to the New York Rangers there as they were looking, you know, to add some pieces to their player front here. But the players that we got in return, definitely one player I felt, you know, fit the mold that Daryl Sutter was looking for. The other, it was why. Because we traded Ole Jokinen and Brandon Bruss at the time. They were going to the New York Rangers. In exchange, Calgary Flames got Chris Higgins and Alice Coley, both forwards here, and there was two forwards getting traded here, and it's like, why? I mean, Chris Higgins, he was definitely a great, uh, you know, you, you know, checking forward there. He had some offensive build here, and he showed in his time in Montreal that he, uh, you know, he scored a couple of 20 goal seasons. He started his career with the Montreal Canadiens there, and then he went to the uh, New York Rangers there, and he was praised by then head coach John Tortorella for his work ethic here, but he was just snake bitten there. But eventually, he was just snake bitten here in Calgary here. But the trade that uh, definitely, you know, made this a really bad trade. It was kind of a bad trade for both teams. This will be a trade that I'm going to say both teams lost in this one, and I think it would have been better off if we didn't make this trade because that was Cole Leak. I mean, he didn't at the time he had a limited no trade clause where. You know, he needed to, he submitted a list of teams that he didn't want to go to. And he did actually play with the Edmonton Oilers first here. And I know both Alberta teams are on his no trade list, but somehow he uh, decided he wanted to come here. That was, I think, one of the reasons why that trade was held up, plus the fact that Flames said, oh, well, we still need only for the next game, the next night here, even though we're going to trade him away after. It was just uh, strange how we looked in that trade there. It, it was like a trade that was going to happen, that it happened. But, uh, you know, definitely the two pieces that we got in return definitely did not work out for the Calgary Flames here. And ultimately, Elish Cole Leak was an expensive anchor that uh, we, you know, he just didn't fit in because he wasn't a gritty player. He was a, he was a skilled player that was definitely showing the decline on his offense. And, you know, definitely he was an expensive anchor. And ultimately, uh, you know, he still had a couple more years left in the contract, and we actually he played some time with the Abbotsford Heat, who was that time was the farm team of the Calgary Flames. Yeah, it makes sense to have the Flames farm team near near Vancouver. Yeah, that makes sense. But uh, we buried him there, and then ultimately we had to sacrifice him with Robin Regeer in a second round pick to trade him to Buffalo. He actually played in Buffalo before, but and he was actually you know had his best days in the NHL there, but. Uh, he definitely just, it was just taking his cap hit to go to Europe here. So, uh, let like I say, let's look back on this trade here. And I think both teams lost this trade here. And then the other part that gets really strange is that, uh, you know, we traded away Ole Okunen after we finally, you know, according to Hockey Buzz, we were long after this guy. And he finally came here, started off well, and then things tailed off here. And then we made a bad trade. And then the part that really was strange was we signed him as a free agent that summer. Although he came here for less, he signed a two-year deal worth $3 million. And I felt the second time that Ole Jokinen was a Calgary Flame, he actually was a better fit. He simplified his game, but why the heck did we trade him and got assets that didn't pay us back? To ultimately sign him back in the off season. I mean, that's kind of the only thing that kind of maybe salvaged this trade. But I remember the free agent frenzy. It was day one of free agent frenzy. It wasn't like you know the end of August that uh, no one signed Ole Oaknin and uh, and it's like oh I'll come back to Calgary. And I like to do my Ole Oaknin voice presently. Like, I I'm Ole Oaknin. I come from Finland and play hockey. You know. It's a great game. <laughs> and I, well, when he was here in Calgary, here at Sound Bites, I, there was a few people I drove crazy. He was like, hi, I'm Ole Okunen. 
But you know, he, I mean, he was great in the community, and he's he played for many teams in the NHL here. But uh, but yeah, I mean, at the time, he he knew the business because I remember he when he tried traded to the New York Rangers here. He in fifty six games, he had a uh, he had eleven goals, twenty four assists, and thirty five points there. And then he said, "I'll try my way, open the voice again." Said, "It's a tough business, you know, when you only when you make five million dollar and." Only score eleven goals. That's not good enough. It's a business. So he went to the New York Rangers there, and in the rest of the season there, he had twenty six in twenty six games he played. He had four goals, eleven assists for fifteen points there. And then the other thing that uh, also remember from the, that rest of that season there, that the New York Rangers and the Philadelphia Flyers were duking it out for the final playoff spot that season. Team whoever wins is in the playoffs. And actually, it came down to the stick of Ole Jokinen on a, on a shootout. It went to a shootout. And ultimately, he missed there, and uh, the New York Rangers were eliminated, and the Philadelphia Flyers went on to make the playoffs as an 8th seed, and, or 7th seed, actually, it worked out. And ultimately, went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals there. So uh, that's another what-if there. But then, after that time with the New York Rangers, he signed back with Calgary. And it, I just remember watching the Three Agent Frenzy on TSN, and I was over here, and they were talking about Flames Forwards, and I heard Ole Oaken, and I'm like, don't tell me he signed back with Calgary, and and he did. Um, I was baffling the, the panel on TSN was baffled, like it just didn't make sense what this trade that uh, we signed him in the off season. I mean, I'll continue breaking down this trade more, but. We were better off not making this trade and keeping only Jokinen to uh, sign into a reduced contract. And actually, it, it says good things about our city and the market here. But I remember uh, the, when Ole Jokinen came back, he actually asked his daughter, where would you like me to go to? And she actually said Calgary. And Ole thought, I don't think that's going to happen. But he did. I mean, I think the second his second time with Calgary... I, I mean, I liked him. I liked what he provided, and he simplified his game. I, mean, I guess you can look at him a little differently that he was making half as much. I mean, his two seasons with Calgary, I mean, the 10-11 season after uh, we brought him back, which still looks weird, 10 years later, in 79 games, he had 17 goals, 37 assists, 54 points here, and then then his last season with Calgary, he played all 82 games. He had 23 goals, 30 assists for 61 points there before he eventually... Went to Winnipeg and Toronto and Nashville and St. Louis and I mean he played for many he played 17 seasons in in the NHL there he's played over 1,200 games he scored 321 points 429 assists for 750 points and with the Flames he played second most games he played with the Flames behind the Florida Panthers there he played 236 games scored 59 goals 106 assists for uh, 165 points there. But he only played six games in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and that was all with Calgary in 2009 there. So uh, that's the Ole Jokinen here. So the other piece of the trade here is that uh, we traded away Brandon Prust again. First to get Ole Jokinen as part of that package there, because at the trade deadline, the Calgary Flames in 2009 here, as it finally happened, going to Hockey Buzz here, he was traded with Matthew Lombardi, and a first-round pick that the Flames chose either 9 or 10 there. And we could probably say we could have been better off deferring to draft in 2010 there because 2009 we kept the first-round pick when we drafted Tim Erickson and he didn't want to play with us. Although the the Phoenix Coyotes drafted Brandon Gormley and he was a bust too, so I guess that first-round pick was dead anyway. And then in turn we got Ole Jokinen and then that third-round pick that eventually we flipped that third round pick with Jordan Leopold's rights, who we happened to get at that trade deadline. So we have the rights to talk to Jay Bomeister there. So, uh, so yeah, and then Brandon Prust, he was traded for Jim Vandermeer from the Phoenix Coyotes. So we have room to sign Jay Bomeister there. So it was just kind of weird how uh, Brandon Prust was involved in two Ole Okunen trades. One to get Ole Okunen here, and then one with Ole Okunen to go to New York Rangers there. But uh, ultimately, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he, he played the rest of that season. He actually played a couple seasons with the New York Rangers there, but he was just, uh, you know, plugging forward, and it was a cheap cap hit. 
But I mean, he played the. I mean, he played uh, actually three seasons with the New York Rangers. There, he actually played most of his career with the New York Rangers. There, he also played with the Montreal Canadiens and the Venus Coyotes briefly after the only Oakland trade, and then the Vancouver Canucks there. So he got three seasons out of Brandon Prust and New York Rangers there, but you know, there's many players of his stature there. So that's what the New York Rangers got here. So they got more out of Brandon Prust than they did with Ole Jokin in here. So what the Flames got, well, Christopher Higgins, he, uh, as I mentioned there, I mean, he had three 20-goal seasons with the Montreal Canadiens in 06, 07, and 08 there. And then he was traded to the New York Rangers in the 08, 09 season there. And then he had a, he only had a nine, eight goals that season. But then when he got traded to Calgary from the New York Rangers in the 9-10 season there, in 55 games with the New York Rangers, he had uh, 6 goals, 8 assists, and 14 points there. So, he, like I said, he was a hard-working player, but he was snake bit here. But then when he came to Calgary, he only played 12 games, and he scored 2 goals and assists for three, 3 points there. And ultimately, he signed as a free agent with the Florida Panthers there, and then he got traded to the Vancouver Canucks there, and he actually had a resurgence and was a big part of the Vancouver Canucks team when they went to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2011 there. So in that way, he kind of stung here, and he actually played most of his career with Vancouver as well, Montreal just behind there. So uh, so yeah, Christopher Higgins, Higgins wasn't here for long here and didn't provide much. He provided some hard work here, but I'm going to say we were better off not making this trade at all here, and, Vancouver, and the New York Rangers did not get... Full value for Ole Jokinen in, in the centerpiece of the trade here. And then Ellis Kolalik. I mean, when he came here, I mean, he spent his first, you know, seven seasons of his career with the uh, Buffalo Sabres there. And then he was in Edmonton Oilers there in the 08 mine season there first. And then he was a, yeah, because he went to Buffalo there. And he was also a Ranger there. So he got traded a few times in the season there. He was on Buffalo, Edmonton, the New York Rangers there. So in the 9-10 season altogether here, he had, uh, in 71 games, he had 11 goals, 16 assists for 27 points there. To start off in the 9-10 season there, he was with the New York Rangers. Yeah, because the, okay, the season before, he was with Buffalo, and then he went to Edmonton there, and then he went to New York Rangers to start the 9-10 season. I'm just reading this on Hockey Reference here. But at the time when he went to Calgary, he had played 45 games with the uh, Buffalo Sabres. He had a Eight goals, 14 assists, or 22 points there. And then when he came to the Calgary Flames in only 26 games, he had three goals, two assists, or five points there. And he was making almost $3 million a season there. And, and he was, he was kind of, you know, a player that if he wasn't scoring, I mean, he wasn't a tough, he wasn't a gritty player. He, he just didn't fit in. And it just, it kind of like felt why we got him. And, and then the 10-11 season there, he only played 26 games with the Flames. Scored four goals, two assists for six points there. And actually after when uh, there was that general manager change here, because this, the DM Phaneuf trade and then this Ole Okunen trade, and then ultimately we traded him to get him back, which still looks strange today. I mean, just because we made this bad trade. I mean, Alex Kolalik eventually got buried in the minors and played with the Abbotsford Heat there, and you know, just to run out of his contract there, because he still, and he still had one more year left after the 11, 10, 11 season there, and going into 11, 12 there, I mean, Calgary traded him with a second round pick and Rob McGuire to just get rid of him, and that's when we got the, that's when we got Chris, or Chris uh, Butler, that was one of the big one of the players who got the return there was Chris Butler there, but, uh, but yeah, this, this was just a strange trade retrospect that, you know, we worked so hard apparently to get Ole Jokin in, and uh, you know he was a great. He was always great in the community wherever he went here, and it was definitely a very expensive price we paid. And I felt that maybe this trade kind of started the why we were just mediocre, and eventually, you know, we were tasked with having to rebuild. And that, you know, Jay Feaster definitely had to inherit some messes there from uh, Daryl Sutter there. I think he did all he can, but then. There might be a couple of trade retrospects that they'll make on a couple of trades that Jay Feaster made that I think wasn't good and ultimately why he was let go from that position there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this was definitely a strange trade that I felt both teams lost. 
Calgary definitely lost because uh, we got an anchor of a contract. We got a player that, you know, I felt was more of a, you know, what Daryl Sutter liked and uh, what Brent Sutter liked, you know, a hard-working player that could chip in the odd dirty goal there. But Alex Cole Leak just, it just seemed strange. He just didn't fit the mold of the team at the time. And then we traded away Ole Oaken that we, or it's, you know, a year after, just under a year after we got him. And according to the rumors, we were after this guy for the longest time there to only sign him back in the offseason. And then the New York Rangers definitely didn't get full value out of him for offense. And, you know, it was definitely probably a confusing time for Lee Oaken at that time, you know, when he finally came to Calgary because he spent many years, he started his career with the, uh, Florida Panthers, and then he was a New York Islander there, and Mike Milbury was, you know, crazy general manager at that time, and then, you know, he settled in with Florida, and then he briefly was a Coyote, and then he, you know, came to Calgary, and initially it was excitement, and he just didn't fit in well with Jerome McGinley the, you know, the next season before he traded him away to only sign him back. I mean, we were better off just letting the contract run out if this was the best deal we had there. and I think with that and the Dion Phaneuf trade, we shook the trade too much and made too much change there. And then, yeah, just to really change the coach there. But what do you think of this trade retrospect? Uh, I mean, did you like Ole Yoke when he was a flame? I mean, I liked him for his sound bites. I know there was one game that, uh, you know, he went like 16 games or something without – scoring a goal, and then he scored two goals in that game, and then he said, I had a big muck. <laughs> I drove people crazy ten years ago, and I did that. Hi, I'm Ole and then I come from Finland and play hockey. Uh, you you think that's how I talk and that funny? Well, I think it's funny you talk like that all the time. <laughs> it's just uh, that accent with those Norwegian countries there, but uh, yeah. So anyway... If you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan journey, you know, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders here, you know, just make sure you hit like, subscribe. I do Calgary sports, you know, recap games, go over stories here about these trade retrospects. You're kind of fun to look back upon and talk about it, both good, bad, and ugly. And definitely the Conroy trade was good when we got him back. Actually also was good when we got him the first time. But I was talking about the time when we got him back, when he was stranded in Red Deer. The Dion Phaneuf trade was bad. Not as bad as the Doug Gilmore trade, but uh, definitely wasn't as good. Maybe a little worse than the Theron Flurry trade. And then this one was just ugly and strange. Like, I'm looking back, it's like, why did we make this trade? I mean, he wasn't... Ex Ole Jokinen was expensive at the time there, but... Uh, I mean, we were better off hanging on to him and re-signing him and didn't have to take, you know, didn't have to lose Brandon Prust and take on an anchor of a contract that uh, eventually Jay Feaster had to try to purge where we, you know, had to give up a second-round pick and Robin Regeer. But, yeah, that's just my take looking back on this one. But, uh, as I always say, go Flames go, and I'll see you in the next video.